In this tutorial video, I'm gonna show you how to put tracer lines on your drone shots. Let's get right into it. We'll use Shot Tracer Pro with the DJI Mavic. You can use any drone you want. It's all software based. Let's take a couple of swings with the drone in the air, import those videos into Shot Tracer Pro, and then add those tracers to our videos. And this will apply to Mac OS and PC. I'm gonna select my drone video that I wanna put a tracer on. Let's go with our DJI video right here and the system will analyze the video for impact sound. Obviously, because we shot it from a drone, this won't apply. Now I'm gonna hit add manually and I'm gonna select and scroll to the position where I am hitting the ball. And for that, I'm using this, this scroll here. Plus I'm gonna use the buttons to set the exact um, moment I'm hitting it. Now I'm using the forward and backward keys, the arrows left and right actually on my keyboard to set the precise impact moment. Now I'm gonna add this shot. You see, I've added this shot here in my um, miniatures. So I'm, I can close this window and obviously there's no tracking because the ball is just too far away from me. Now I want to add a tracer to it. I don't need to do camera stabilization because the drone hovers in the air and does not move. So all I need to do is add a tracer. And for this purpose, I can either choose a line molding option or keyframe option. Now, which one you'll choose depends how you're filming. You can film from different angles, including incoming tracers. If you see the ball in your video, you could use keyframes. They will create a more accurate tracer line. So I'm gonna adjust the impact frame, set the impact frame, zoom in, and now I am just going to click where I see the ball and I'm gonna move frames by using the spacebar. I can jump multiple frames by continuously clicking spacebar. And lucky for me, in this video, I can see the ball very well against the the grass, but then I lose it in the sky. Therefore, I can't really get a accurate apex for that ball flight. Let's see what the system um, calculates for that apex. I know the ball must have landed somewhere around here. So I'm gonna set this landing point right here. I'm gonna press create line. Now it creates this weird looking line, which is kind of useless. And that's because it just simply didn't have enough um, keyframes to figure out a correct flight line for this shot. Therefore, I'm gonna use line molding. So I simply press the gears icon, then edit trajectory, line molding. I'll set the, the impact frame to the moment where I'm hitting the ball. Now I'll set impact and here we go. I'm gonna create and mold the tracer line to the shot I want. And here you can actually be creative and don't necessarily need to be precise because the ball in the videos is not very well seen. One thing important to note is, is these three dots. They, um, they simulate acceleration of the shot that was hit. So obviously these are um, adapted to actual golf shots that are not drone based because the steps in drones because you're so far away from the golfer are gonna be much, much shorter. Therefore, I'm gonna take this acceleration slider and slide it all the way down. We actually will reduce the steps in the slider to make it even um, smaller. But for this example, we gone, that's as far down we can go. Transparency just gives you uh, the ability to make the line transparent so I can use the left and right keys to adjust the line um, according to where the ball is. So I see the ball is a little bit more left of my line, so I'll just adjust it a little bit, make it look more as if it's on the line. Now the flight time, again, manual, you can go, um, usually a ball flight time for a tee shot is around six seconds. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna reduce it to five seconds or 5.1 in this case. And then I just create the line. And here we go. Uh, line looks great. I'm just gonna make the starting of the line much thinner and the ending of the line also much thinner. I have a little bit of an outline there, that's why I turned black. So I'm just gonna turn out the outline to zero 
and now a nice little thin tracer and I can play back that video and see how I did. Looks great. I liked it a lot. Fantastic. Now, as you can see, this is an example of a tracer line from a stationary dr drone video. The drone is not moving. But what happens if I have a video where the drone is moving? For the best effect for this shot, we want to make sure that the drone is flying always in one direction, forward or sideways. It's single directional. There is no panning of the drone. You're basically, all you're doing is you're holding the right hand side stick of the drone forward and you're pushing it in one direction without switching course. This will help the software pin down the tracer overlay onto that drone video perfectly. For example, like we said, um, towards the target. We can't use any orbit or pan shots. We have to use single directional shots for this following tutorial to work. So I have this shot here where the golfer hits the ball and the drone flies along with the ball flight. Obviously much slower, but you get the sense of it. So I'm going to import this video next. The system tries to find a impact sound, can't find it, so I'm just going to add it manually. This is where the ball was hit. I'm going to add the shot, close the uh, select impact at shot window, stop tracking because the ball is way too small to, to be seen. And the first thing I want to do right now is add camera stabilization. And you can do that through the gears icon, or you can do it simply by pressing this button right here, camera stabilization. And this is basically camera tracking, um, but it only works in X and Y axis. We have not yet added Z axis. This will come some sometime in the future, but for the moment, that's why we need omnidirectional, meaning single directional, um, actually single directional um, flight, because we're only tracking X, uh, X and Y axis. So. I want to make sure that I start tracking before the ball is hit. So I'm going to set, um, I'm not going to set the impact frame here. I'm going to set like a couple of seconds before impact frame is uh, done because I already want to start tracking the scene before, um, before the golfer hits the ball. Now I'm going to uh, put reference markers all around the uh, golf course. And the most important f he thing here is you don't want to put it on the golfer, around the golfer. Anything that's moving, um, you don't want to put that those markers on. So obviously the the drone is moving, but anything other than the drone, meaning that a golfer, a golf cart, or a golf cart drives past your points, you want to make sure you don't put those markers anywhere where there's um, motion, um, external motion in the shot. This includes very um, uh, strong moving trees because of the wind. So anything that has motion that seem, uh, has to be omitted. So you just want to put those where there's no motion and a high contrast ratio. Uh, the sky is a, better, is a good example of a low contrast ratio because you don't have any uh, features in the sky other than clouds, but these are not very high contrast ratio features. But a bunker, uh, the grass cut, these are great features to add those markers on. So you want to put them at the beginning of your um, flight path and then towards the end of the flight path as well. So it's they keep updating themselves on the route. Now, also important, you want to keep marking those markers on a flat surface. You don't want to start marking them on trees, on hills, um, because this will throw the system off. Um, so keep marking those markers on a flat surface, that meaning around the fairway, around the bunkers, around the tee boxes. Um, and if you, for instance, have marked in a wrong location, just um, press down the mouse and um, hold and how you um, uh, select, basically hold and select the markers you want to delete. Uh, they will be now selected and then hit the delete key. To remove them. Once you're happy with your selected markers, you can go ahead and hit the track markers button right here on the lower left corner and let the system track the markers. You'll notice that the done button is grayed out until the system has actually tracked the markers. And that will happen every time you add or delete 
markers. You'll always have to hit track markers before you can continue. Now my I can hit done, but I want to preview my markers. So let's see here. So the markers look good. They look great. They're very stable in the picture. Um, along the flight path, I can keep on adding markers. So for example, right here, I'm just going to add some more because the fairway opens up here. And I'm just going to hit track markers again. Wait for a few seconds for the video to process. Uh, I mean the tracking to process. And now I've added um, a tracked scene. And I could do that if I wanted to all the way towards the green because as you can see here, um, losing a couple of markers from the back. But I, I'm happy with this because I, it's just a driver. The shot is not going for the green. It's just a driver shot. I hit done. And now I get this a shaky hand um, icon in the lower right corner of my miniature here of the video I'm working with. That means the video has been stabilized successfully. Next thing I need to do is add a tracer. Now I can do the tracer again in two different ways. I can do it by uh, using the keyframes or I can use it by line molding. I would always suggest using line molding because again, keyframes are difficult to spot um, the golf ball in each frame when the golfer is this far away. We can give this a try where we're gonna just mark the ball in all the frames. Sometimes you're lucky because a white golf ball against a green backdrop will be more visible than if it was a um, green golf ball against a green surface. But as you can see, you lose it in the sky you could, however, try that and see what comes out of it. So we have the line here. Doesn't look so bad. I'm quite happy with it. Let's see what comes out of it when I now do a playback. Not bad. Not bad at all. I see the line twitching here. And that's because there isn't enough markers once the tracer gets to that location here. You can also use that scroll button, uh, I mean, sorry, scroll line on the bottom of um, your preview to see how the line evolves through um, the time frame. And one thing I would suggest here is just go back to your stabilization, use camera stabilization again, and just scroll forward a little bit. And once you're here, just keep on adding more markers just to give the system uh, more references to work with. I want to add some on the side. Just want to make sure that it's on a fairly um, even terrain. And then I'm going to add some more markers once we are past those T boxes because I feel like here we might be losing a bunch of them. So that looks better. Track markers. Now the thing with adding those marker, uh, adding the tracer as a keyframe um, option is it doesn't allow you um, to do any changes. You can do a little bit of a um, change in apex, but that's about it. So what I suggest doing is always using the line molding feature because it gives you much more flexibility in terms of what kind of line you're building. So I'm gonna set the impact, create the line mold. I have pretty much of a better idea now uh, how the ball flew since I saw that um, in the preview just just a few seconds ago using the keyframes. Uh, lower my acceleration volume. Make sure that the ball starts at the location just a little bit below it. Now I create line and now I have created the line here. If I wanted to edit it, I wouldn't suggest editing it inside the editor. I would always suggest going back to trajectory, line molding, and using the line molding um, feature or screen to edit the line. Now, what you'll see is that the line seems to be a little bit too high at, at the top or it's again, it's moving out of place. So what I wanted to do is play around with camera stabilization and add and remove some, 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 some more dots. I'm just going to remove those side dots, see if it improves. So sometimes you can just add more dots, take away dots. There is, at the moment, there's like 
no perfect way or no perfect implementation of this. So it takes a little bit of trial and error on your end to get those lines looking good. Once we include the z-axis in camera stabilization, um, this will be a much more uh, smoother feature. But for the moment, if you want to add the drone shots, this is kind of the the work you have to put put in to get the right shot. Right, that looks better. We just need to adjust the landing spot. We'll adjust it by scrolling forward a little bit. Pull it down. I want to get the height a little bit lower. I'll probably have to do that through the line molding part because it's, it's going lower. So I'm just going to lower it. And now it should look pretty good. Yeah, I like that a lot. I just don't like the flight time because it takes a little while to get there. Um, but you can adjust that as you wish. So I would like to adjust five seconds. And what I would also do is I would say hide the tracer. Let's see here. Um, tracer size, tracer effects. No, we want to hide. Yeah, right here. Hide the tracer after two seconds. And we want to hide the tracer by flying out. So it's going to fly out. Or we actually want to fly out the tracer during flight. That's also not a good option. So fly out during flight will basically just create a tracer for you. And it's going to fly out like a bullet with the actual golf shot. Also looks great. Fantastic. Um, now I'm going to turn that off. And I'm just going to do fade out tracer or fly out after it lands. And here we go. So I'm going to hit the shot. Drone follows the shot. And that looks great. Perfect. I'll just hide it quicker because the, the closer the uh, the drone gets to the landing point, the more of a tilt shift you'll get. So I wouldn't use that. Uh, you can obviously also add pop-ups to those shots. So I'm going to add a um, POI pop-up. Um, that could be, for example, I'm just going to say carry. And that's going to be for the bunk carry. And we're going to say that's... Uh, 233 yards, press OK. And you see now I have this little um, carry button, uh, carry right here. And I can again zoom in a little bit uh, to see where it will, what it will look like in the time frame. And then I can scale it. So I'm going to scale it, uh, I'm going to make it double the size, not as too big. I'm going to make it 50% um, bigger. And I can set uh, where, when the, the, this pop-up should appear, so I want it to appear um, two seconds, minus two, before impact. So show trigger is set to shot impact. That means it will show at shot impact. But the offset is set to minus two, meaning two seconds before I hit the ball. And when do I want to hide it? I want to hide it at apex. So I'm going to set apex, and then hide offset is going to be one. So it's going to be one second after the line reaches apex. Let's take a look at this. So it's already there. You can see it in the distance. And it hit apex and the distance feature has hidden. Great. Now I'm really happy with what I've created here and I'm good to render it out. With this, I will complete the tutorial. As we've discussed, there's two options. Using line molding is definitely the way to go with drone shots and you have a still drone, so just an aerial shot with no movement, or you have a single directional drone shot where the drone is moving towards a target. And these are at the moment the best practices for creating your drone shots using Shot Tracer Pro and the tracers embedded on your drone shots.